This is English shorthand dictation number 146 and the dictation speed is 160 words per minute. Ready? Start. Honorable Speaker Sir, I thank each one of the honorable members who have spoken today in detail about the insurance bill which opens up the sector to receive foreign direct investment up to 74%. As you are aware, insurance is a very highly regulated sector and the regulator actually regulates many minute details of insurance itself. The regulator approves the product, regulates the pricing, oversees the investment and also regulates the way it is marketed. So insurance sector is very highly regulated. Every bit of what we do after discussing in this house is part of what the regulators take into cognizance and effectively that is what is kept as oversight. All of us have been hearing discussions about FDI limit going up and whether it will become another East India company and so on. I am sure many of us do recognize and I would want to place it on record that FDI is only an upper limit and there is no compulsion that every company will have to take up to 74%. Increasing the limit does not mean the FDI will increase automatically to that extent in each one of the companies. Even as I go into the details of what the safeguards are, it will be very clearly established that the funds of the policyholders will be in invested only within India. So FDI will not only bring capital, it will also bring in greater competition, consumers will have more choices, there will be best practices being brought in from different parts of the world and that will be possible with opening up this sector to FDI. I want to underline the fact that today there is 49% FDI allowed through automatic route. Many honorable members have asked whether the insurance sector has been benefited and what actually has been the penetration and if that has not made a difference, what is the hurry to increase it further to 74%. I would like to dwell on that point a bit more. All private insurance companies meet the insurance regulator's solvency margin norm of 150%. Today many of the companies are hard pressed to maintain that solvency level. When we talk about insurance companies, our discussions are generally confined only to the public sector insurance companies. I will explain to the honorable members that today the share of the public sector, whether it is in life insurance or in general insurance and the share of the private sector will itself explain why there is a need for bringing more FDI into this country because of the solvency ratio requirement. If you have to maintain the solvency margin at 150% and you are in the private sector, it is not that easy. But at the same time, there are investors in the long-term funding nature who are themselves willing to invest in India so that they get enough returns. This will be important for the honorable members to recognize and to take cognizance of it. As I said, the attention of many honorable members speaking on this bill has been purely on the public sector undertakings. So I want to underline this fact that three of the seven public sector insurers are below solvency margin, but they are public sector undertakings. So the government will infuse money and they will be taken care of. But outside in the private domain, there are companies on which the government has nothing to do, but the market will have to provide them opportunities to raise money and that is why increasing the FDI to 74% is important. To presume that there is enough liquidity in the market today and to think there is no stress today may not be a well-founded argument. There is definitely a financial stress for raising money, especially for private sector insurance companies which need to maintain that solvency ratio. As I said, regulators require you to keep 150%. Where do they get that money from if they have to maintain that kind of solvency ratio as a matter of due diligence? Just for understanding, solvency margin is the ratio of assets to liabilities. If that is the situation today of the insurance industry, I want to say it is not different from earlier times. Probably that is one of the points that one of the honorable members raised when he said that while earlier governments wanted to do it, we opposed it. I would tell you why we want to do it today. 
I will explain the circumstances which have changed and as a result the opposition will have to change. I assure the honorable members that there has been enough thinking by the regulator since my July speech wherein I had said that there could be an increase in some of the sectors inclusive of insurance sector that work was taken up by the regulator consultations were held and it was clearly said that we need to raise the insurance cap definitely because you need more money to come in the insurance regulatory and development authority of india has held consultations with 60 insurers a number of promoters leading industry chambers all of whom suggested that we need to increase it so it is only after due consultations that we have come up with this bill some of the honorable members were observing with a bit of anxiety that we are rushing through it it is not like that there is a clear testing of the ground through the insurer consultation through the insurer and the opinions coming through from the industry's stakeholders which affirm the need for increasing the cap and therefore it has been taken up so the recommendations are very strong and that is why we have gone ahead with raising the cap let us get a perspective of how many insurance companies are there in public sector and in private sector otherwise we tend to think that everything to do with raising of the insurance cap is only for life insurance corporation first of all let me take this opportunity to say that many honorable members have raised this point in fact one of the honorable members concentrated almost 90% of his speech on life insurance corporation this is not life insurance corporation bill it has nothing to do with life insurance corporation this is completely the insurance sector bill and the amendment is to raise the cap here i want to draw the attention of the honorable members to the number of public sector companies versus the number of private sector companies that actually brings the right perspective for us to understand what we are talking about insurance sector has three components the one which is entirely dealing with life is life insurance the second which is a slightly broad basket consists of three different components first one is general insurance which in some cases may partly include health second is a stand alone setup of health insurance which deals only with health third is agriculture insurance there are some companies which are exclusively dealing with agriculture insurance so if you look at the spectrum of insurance one is completely life insurance and the other is general insurance which consists of three different categories in life insurance there is only one public sector company in private sector there are 23 companies which deal with life insurance today they have to comply with the regulator's requirement as regards solvency ratio they need money to come out of stress some of the companies are in a stress situation when we come to the second basket which consists of three different layers there are four companies in public sector and 22 in private sector if you go to the next one which is the stand alone health insurance companies there is not a single company in the public sector which is a stand alone health insurer but there are five in the private sector in agriculture insurance which is the third component of the second second wider basket only one company exists in agriculture insurance and that is in the public sector there is none in the private sector there are also companies which are reinsurers public sector has only one reinsurance company whereas private sector has 11 of them therefore when we are talking about insurance sector it is seven companies in public sector versus 61 in private sector for these 61 companies money should be available for doing business the government alone cannot do it all on that ground we are consistent that is why the public enterprise policy about which i will explain in a minute clearly says that the private sector should also have a role to play otherwise the aspiration of a growing india is not going to be met within our time so that we see the changes which are so important for us if that is the spread of insurance it is very important for us to recognize what impact it has on job creation many honorable members raised their concern about the future of the employees of life insurance corporation i will stand by them i want to tell you that every word of all the assurances made to each one of the employees will be safeguarded by this government 
but what will happen to the private sector employees who is going to give them equity for building the business if they shut down their business what will happen to the employees that is why the government of india wants to give the private sector ample opportunities to raise money for business